In this lecture, we're going to look at a different API and use it to get census data. And part of the aim here is to provide more experience with APIs in general and the Python requests library. But getting census data is also a really common task in planning. And so this is something that you'll probably have to do frequently, both in your work, but also in the rest of this course. Now, traditionally, if you wanted to get some census data, you had to go and download large CSV or other files and then decipher them. But recently, the Census Bureau has introduced an API, which is very well documented at this link. And so take a look and see some examples and look at what type of data are available and so on. Now, if you're a power user and you want to do more than 500 queries a day, you'll need to register with the Census Bureau. It's free, but they'll give you your own key. Again, they want to make sure that people aren't overloading their servers. They want to protect against bots and hackers and so on. But we are going to do some short queries here. So for this class, that's not needed. So the example we're going to start with is downloading population by county. From the 2021 American Community Survey, we'll use the five-year estimates. So this is the sample survey that the US um, Census Bureau does that provides population, but also a range of other um, variables on population and housing. And if we look at the documentation, we're going to see that the API call takes the following form. It's going to be this base string, and then there's going to be a year. Then we want ACS, but we want the specific ACS data set. And then we're going to ask it to get a particular table name in a particular geography. So I looked at their website, and let's look at their queries here. So we can see the examples that they build up here. It's very well documented. I found that the population, the variable code that the Census Bureau uses is B01 and so on. And if I want it for all counties, let's do for um, county. So I'm going to substitute 2021 into year, ACS5, the five year estimates, that's the specific, specific data set. This is a table name, and I want it at the county level. Now we could actually paste this into a browser as well and see what comes up. And so this gives us an idea of what we're going to expect when we do it in requests. But if we want to get it into Python, we're going to use the requests library. We're going to pass this string to requests. I'm going to ask it what the type of the response is. So that the text, it looks like it's a string. And then this looks pretty similar to what we had in the web browser. So we have a county, a state code, a county code, and a RAM population estimate for that county. While it looks like a string, it's actually JSON format. And that information is on the census API documentation. So if we pass it using the JSON function, as you see, the JSON format is a list of lists. So let's look at the first five rows here. I'm going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 using this colon notation. Looks like the first row is a header. And then the, each row after that is the population and then the count county code for each county. Pandas is pretty smart at passing JSON data. So we can convert this into a pandas data frame. The wrinkle here is that we don't want to use the first row of data. That's the header. Those are the column names. So we're going to pass the data as everything after the first row. Remember, we start with row 0. So row 1 and onwards, we're going to say as the data. And the column names are in this, um, this header row. So this looks much more usable. We can also rename this column to something more re meaningful. And pandas has a helpful rename function. You can rename an index. You can rename columns. And the examples are actually much more intuitive here. So for example, if you want to rename the columns, you can pass a dictionary with the old column name and the new column name. You can also rename indexes. 
The other trick I'm going to use here is the in place keyword. And this changes the data frame in place, so it modifies df rather than returning a new one. And this would be the same as um, I could do df equals df without the in place keyword. This would be exactly the same um, response. So now we get a population column that's named something more intuitive. So I'd like you to explore the documentation on the census API. There's a lot of richness there. Think about how you would get information at a different level, not just counties, but perhaps the census tracts. What if you want to disaggregate population by gender or race? And getting census data is one of the most common tasks we'll do in this course. And the Census Bureau has a really well-documented API, especially if you have more complex or esoteric queries, this is going to be the way to go. But in the next lecture, we're going to look at the SenPy package, which is a simpler way of getting information for more common queries.